Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for a short rant. Now, about two years ago or something, my company offered me a free uh, mobile phone SIM card with unlimited data. And, well, you know, I didn't really need a smartphone, but I thought, hey, I've got unlimited data, so, you know, I should probably get myself one of these newfangled smartphones because I've up until then I've been using you know just a dumb Nokia you know just a standard phone you know it's and it worked perfectly and I was I was certainly happy with it but I decided to get one of these a Nokia E71 smartphone a piece of shit as it turned out anyway I got one of these Nokia E71s because it was it was sort of in the good price range it had a nice QWERTY keyboard on it and the big selling point for me was the battery life. It was advertised as having up to, I think, 480 hours battery life, 20 days. It's like, wow, fantastic, on standby. Now, I, don't, I hardly use my phone at all. I, you know, I'm lucky if I get one or two calls a week and, and use one or two data connections a week. So, really, standby power consumption for me is everything. And 20 days, oh! beauty. My old Nokia had like 10 days, so I knew 20 days would be a load of bullshit, you know, just typical marketing bullshit. I'd never get it. But, um, you know, I'd be happy if I got 10 days out of it, just like my old phone, and I had all the new, you know, smartphone data capabilities. Uh, so yeah, I got the Nokia E71, and from day one, it was a piece of shit. Not only did the damn thing crash on me all the time, the software wouldn't update, you know, it's got a USB connection, you hook it up to Nokia's software and it's supposed to download the firmware easily. You think I could download the firmware? No, it would just lock up. What a heap of shit. Anyway, uh, you know, it's, I had all sorts of problems with the lockups that would cause, I'd have to lock the machine up totally, I'd have to remo physically remove the battery to restart the damn thing. Can you believe it? Oh, unbelievable. Anyway, that wasn't the worst of the problems. Um, one of the first things I did was I wanted, oh, it's got a GPS in it, so I wanted some GPS software. So I looked around and Garmin, uh, the Garmin Mobile XT software looked like the best, you know, best thing. Everyone said it was the best out there. So I got that and I downloaded that on here and it worked pretty well and everything. But from day one, the battery life on this thing, instead of getting the 20 days or even 10 days or even 5 days, I was lucky to get 2 days. I was getting like a day and a half. What a complete load of shit. I thought, okay, you know, the battery's, you know, dead in it or whatever. So, I, you know, I started reading, as you do, you start reading the forums and, you know, what, what other geeks have, you know, had problems with this device and sure enough, the battery life is was, you know, instead of, you know, being fantastic that everyone was, com you know, and that the marketing raved about for this thing, no, they actually, everyone was saying, oh, yeah, I get three days, I get four days, or I get, you know, two days, and, you know, things like that. And then, you know, so I thought, okay, well, you know, it's, it was all just really pie-in-the-sky marketing bullshit, and, and I've been had. And, uh, but then I looked into some, some more, and I found out that it was the Garmin mobile XT software that would install this little uh, secret utility uh, when your phone boots up, not even if you run the software, okay? It installs some little utility hidden in memory that uh, when you boot up the phone, it'd chew excess power consumption. So one of the first things I did was install this what's called Nokia Energy Profile program, and it can actually display graphically your continuous power consumption. Watch this, I'll press a key and you'll see it you'll see it spike there. If you actually hit a key, you can actually see that it actually processes a key and it's really cool. And this will continue to run when the phone is actually shut down. Uh, you know, in standby mode. So you can actually see the standby power consumption. It was fantastic. So it allowed users to actually compare their phones, and sure enough, um, I don't have a shot of it anymore, but I'll see if I can find one on the net, but the Nokia, I uh, mean, the Garmin Mobile XT software, that little secret utility in there, what it would do is when the phone's in standby mode, for some reason, it would come on and you would see a, a square wave pulse like this 
of, you know, over, you know, several seconds it'd go high and then several seconds it'd go low. And it would pulse like that when it's in standby mode. And that would greatly increase the average standby power consumption. And uh, in this case, it was like, um, there you go, it's, it's just switched off there. It just went into standby for a, a few seconds. And as you can see, the average value dropped like that. And then when I switched it back on just then, it pulsed up and it went down. Anyway, um, yeah, the secret utility would just continually suck power for some reason. Nobody knew why. And uh, that increased the power consumption to like 0.18 watts in standby mode and well if you do the math based on the capacity of the thing yeah you're only going to get like two days and it actually tells you um, how much time you've got left there it is in this case what's that 28 hours left based on the current consumption so it's really good it tells you how much estimates how much supply you got left and sure enough there was no way in hell that this thing was going to meet anywhere near its 20 days, let alone 10 days, it was going to get two days maximum. I'd been had. Anyway, the smart geeks on the forum, they figured out that, um, you know, you could get this background monitor utility that uh, you could actually disable apps in memory, all these hidden apps. So it told you to download this and you get rid of, you know, you can disable that Garmin uh, XT uh, hidden app in the background and it would increase your power consumption. Great! So I did that and um, no, I got maybe two and a half days if I was lucky. You know, it was still a heap of shit. And I, I just resigned myself to the fact that this was just garbage and I was just going to get crap battery consumption. So that was until last week when I actually um, um, I got, I, I, I actually got some SMS spam from Nokia, and normally I just delete the thing. I hate it. I don't know how they got my contact details. Anyway, in the, I, you know, I read the SMS message and it said Garmin um, Nokia Maps, the the new Ovi Nokia Maps are now free. Worldwide Maps, totally free forever. So I thought, oh, okay, what's the catch? But no, sure enough, they are completely free. Nokia now give away their uh, GPS mapping software and it works really good. It's from a company called Ovi, O-V-I or something like that and it works really good. So I download and install that, it's terrific. So I totally uninstalled the Garmin Mobile XT software and what do you know? Magic! Overnight I now get, uh, well I'll tell you what, I charged this last Sunday night, uh, last Sunday and it's now uh, Tuesday, sorry, what is it? No, Wednesday. Wednesday the following week, and, I've st and I'm still down to, where is it? Uh, I'm down to, look at how many bars I've got left. There it is, I've still got like three bars left on the, on the actual battery. So, you know, and it says that I'll easily get 30 or 50 hours more out of it. Fantastic, I'm getting my 10, 12, you know, maybe even 15 days out of this thing. Pretty close to its claim, or good enough to its claim specification. I can't believe it. it. Was that horrible Garmin Mobile XT software? What a heap of shit! There's only one thing I hate worse than buggy embedded software, and that's buggy embedded software which doesn't take into account the performance of the device. It pisses me off, it really does. Urgh. Oh god, these monkeys at Garmin who wrote this Mobile XT software, usually I'm a fan of Garmin products, but this Mobile XT software, heap of shit. They probably outsource the damn firmware to some code monkeys in bloody India or somewhere. I don't know, and I don't care. But they it's a heap of shit. They didn't even test it to see if it, you know, affected the power consumption. This was two years ago. And the reports are all over the internet about how shit this is. And Garmin's working on it. Did they fix it? No. Bloody hell. And Nokia aren't getting off the bloody hook either. Because for years the firmware was actually, um, had a big play in the power consumption. I... Now, I had lots of trouble, so much trouble updating the firmware in this thing, but they reckon every time they update the firmware, um, you know, you read on the forums, they update the firmware, oh, the power consumption's improved. Well, geez, no shit. Why didn't you make that a priority when you wrote the software two years ago? Unbelievable.
So I've now got the latest firmware in it and I've, de I've gotten rid of that piece of shit Garmin Mobile XT software and, you know, I'm reasonably happy with it now but it still crashes and, well, I still think it's pretty much a piece of shit. So what's the moral of the story? Well, if you're an embedded programmer designing writing software for th devices like this, you know, power consumption is critical. What you do in your software can have a major effect on the hardware, you know, the, the performance of the hardware, not only speed, power consumption, responsiveness, uh, reliability in terms of lockups, there's lots of things to consider. So just learn that these things should be tested and you have to put a lot of thought into doing stuff like that when you're writing this firmware. And if you're some code monkey somewhere and oh, I don't know what hardware is, well bloody hell, get a new job!